director at the Ward Museum, but today I get to play around and do some artwork with you all. Uh, we're going to be doing some block printing. So I learned how to do block printing using linoleum blocks. And this is sort of a classic linoleum block that you use to make prints. And, and the prints you make from it are sort of like intricate stamps. So you get to design your own stamp. Um, this material is very hard. I don't know if you can hear that. So you need to actually warm it up somehow to make it more, more pliable or malleable so you can carve into it. So we're not gonna use that today. Today we are going to instead use these little rubber uh, pads, which you can get pretty much at any craft store online. If you look up linoleum block printing supplies, these will come up also. Um, and what we're going to do is draw or transfer design onto here. We're gonna use some carving tools to carve out spaces that uh, will be what's called the negative space in the drawing, so the part that doesn't get the ink on it. And then we'll roll some ink on here, sort of like instead of doing a stamp pad like you might be used to, we're gonna roll ink on and then transfer it to a piece of paper. So, um, this is gonna be fun. And I'm here with Brenda. Brenda Miller's our, our education director and you've never done block printing? No. <laughs> oh, right, yes, yeah, so we get a new view. This is gonna be fun. Actually, maybe I'll show you the so, tools first that we're going to use. So we've got the pad. We're going to actually use very sharp little gouges to get the rubber out of this rubber pad. And they are hidden in this. And you can get these tools again if you look up online, linoleum block carving tools. It's the same tools I'd be using for this bigger block on here. It's a little bit different than wood block carving supplies. So don't get those uh, unless you want to do wood block carving. Um, and these have little gouges that are hidden in the end of this. So if you want to, oh, you've already heard of here. <laughs> It comes, this, this particular one comes with three different sizes. So we've got like a really skinny little tip here and that is to get very fine lines or to trace around detail that you want to like then take bigger parts out next to that but you want to make sure that the detail is very fine. Um, we've got sort of a, a little medium guy here and then a larger one and I don't know if you can see the ends of these but it's a, it's a little bit of a wider um, and so it takes out more material. You can use all of them to take out a little bit less or a little bit more material depending on how deep you carve into the into the rubber. So I usually use the medium um, for the majority of my work, but I'll be switching out as I go. The way that you change up your tool is on the end of this here, there's a little, I think it's probably a ball bearing in there, um, sort of sandwiched between some other little metal pieces and that's where we're going to stick the gouges there. So all you do is you twist this and it's lefty loosey righty tighty. Um, so turn it left. You can kind of see and <laughs> but you can kind of see there's like it makes a little space there by yeah. the ball. You take the not so sharp end and you stick it in that space. I just need to make mine a little looser. Doo -doo. Pardon me. And then you twist it back right to tighten it up. A safety precaution, make sure <laughs> you're always carving away from yourself and that you don't have your fingers there. Like don't hold the pad and then carve toward your hand because if you slip, it's really easy to cut yourself. I've done it um, more times than I'd like to admit. <laughs> but um, yeah, so just always try to keep your hand to the side and carve away from yourself. So that is the actual carving tool. Uh, we will also be using some printing ink, and you can get this in, in tubes or in jars. Um, this particular brand is Speedball. There are different brands you can pick up at Michael's, your local craft supply store or online. A little bit goes a long way with this. Uh, also note that this particular kind is for printing on paper, but you can also get special inks that you can print on clothes or fabric. You know, if you want to print on a bag or, or a shirt or, or whatever. You can do that too. So they make different kinds of, of block printing inks. So what we're going to do for this, and I'll uh, put a little bit on now to show you what we'll do later on more, is you just put a little bit on here. So just have a little doll up there. And we are going to take a roller like this. Again, online, look up linoleum block printing supplies and you'll get this. This one's also a speedball. And you're going to roll it out. As you can see there like that. So you get, and I'm doing it um, back and forth different directions so that I get the ink all over the entire roller pretty evenly. And you actually want to have fairly thin because if you do it really gloopy, really thick, it gets caught in the, the little like cracks and crevices that you've, that you've already that you've just carved out. And I'll show you an example one to show you what it's going to be like. So this is one I carved 
yesterday. It's just a, a leaf design I made up that I drew right out on this and it carved out. I'll show you a little bit what this is going to look like here. And then we'll actually do it all together. So this, I don't know, can you see this okay? All right. Yeah. I'm actually gonna just roll this on at the edges here. Oops. Yeah. Should finish product, I guess, before we really get started doing it ourselves here. That. So you can see this. This now has wet ink all over it here. I'm just gonna plop it on the paper. Boop. Use a clean roller. Um, and the reason I'm using a roller instead of my hands is so that it's more even pressure. Because if I use my fingers, I might press harder in some areas and it might get smudged there or be darker than the other areas. You can also get round um, discs. I believe they're called brayers. They're sort of just a round disc with a handle and it does the same sort of a thing. But these rollers are, are available at just local craft stores and that sort of thing. So I've got that. Lift it up. And then there you go. Lovely. So, yeah, so now we're going to make a brand new design and Brenda's going to join me here. All well, this particular ink is water soluble, comes out of clothes really well, comes off of furniture. Don't ask me how I know, I've got it everywhere. Um, <laughs> and it will wash right off of here with just a little bit of soap and water. So I'm not too worried about this being here right now. So there are two ways that we can go about putting a design onto this, this clean rubber pad here. One is to draw directly on it, and this takes pencil very well, and you can actually erase it a little bit off of there. Um, it works pretty much like paper with pencil on here. So you can draw a design directly on. The other way is to draw a design on a piece of paper and then transfer it over, and that takes a couple steps, because everything's gonna be mirror image. And just as an example, yesterday, um, I, my, well, if your house is anything like mine, everybody's obsessed with Animal Crossing. So <laughs> we made a little Animal Crossing figures here, Timmy and Tommy, to saying hello, hello. But it had to be mirror image of what it would we want it to be in the end because I'm going to um, put ink on here and then put it down right here, and I'll show you why that is. I'm going to roll some ink on here and make a print of it to show you how it turns out. So I'm going to take this ink. I think I've got enough on here to do this. Put this on here. Again, I'll show you the, the letters are backwards from how we would ordinarily read them. And it's because I'm now going to go boop like this, and it's going to be a mirror image of what was on there. If I did this correctly. And I'll lift this up. And there. Ta -da. So that it comes out correct in the print. So the way that I got to this was by doing a series of tracings, essentially where I first started with a drawing, traced it on the back by holding it up onto just a sliding glass door. If you have a light box at home, great, sliding glass door works well, or a window. And then I put the, the side that I, I the, the original drawing down. So I'm actually tracing then, and then I'm, I'm gonna trace the backwards one onto here and trace it. So this is the second time I'm tracing it, the third time I'm drawing it, right? And what happens is the part that's here transfers onto this. Mm -hmm. So it makes a backwards image onto here. So you have to trace it a few times in order so. to get to that point. Um, here we go, we're gonna draw something. I'm gonna just do like repeating stars, something fun. Uh-oh, don't tell the boss I got paint on the table. I'll clean it up <laughs> later. So, okay, I'm gonna do, do a star here. do this and now mine mine there's less room to do this than Brenda's but you can always carve try a print and they go oh you know what I think I want to add a little more here or I want to tweak that you can always take away more you can't add it back in but you can always take away more if you want to so it's probably best to start off a little bit more conservative you know to, to not carve the whole thing up um, but yeah you ready to get get carving let's do it all right 
So we're gonna load in. I'm gonna go to the smaller, um, the deeper you go, it'll go wider, but if you try, if you, if you end up going wider than the, the tip of your gouge, it'll start to break the rubber. Um, so you, you don't wanna just dive all the way in and try to do wider than the tool can go. You don't really wanna go wider than the, the tip of your tool. You'll mm -hmm. start to break the rubber. So um, yeah, now we just dive in and carve. So right. it's gonna, and again, you wanna try to keep your hand to the side or at least not the direction that you're carving <laughs> and carve away from yourself. And then if you're doing uh, curves, you can either curve your hand, you can also sort of keep going out and then curving the, the pad, um, just whatever mm -hmm. you're more comfortable doing. Okay. <laughs> I keep my finger here sort of as a, as a guide oh, when I start. Okay. You don't have to, but it just sort of lets me place it where I want it to go. And then I carve, whoop. And if you kind of lift up as you carve, it makes a little bit of a point at the end. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, if you don't want that point, if you want to have a really hard end, what you can do is, I can't do it so much with a little tiny end, but with a with a wider end, or if you have a flat, um, like it's more of a chisel type of piece, you can punch in and make make a cut that you're cutting up to, and then it'll sort of the wider gouge. There we go. And that's it. Well, this is addicting. Uh-huh. <laughs> it can be really sort of... I don't know, calming, meditative, something. It's very cathartic. about um, meeting to mirror it, neither of us actually remembered that when she started carving. <laughs> so, um, so she's just drawn this so we can actually demonstrate how to trace and transfer a drawing so that it's backwards on the, the, the surface that you're carving so it prints the correct so, way. So Brenda now has, this is the other side, this is the original drawing. She traced it on the back. And so then she's going to put the original side down so that she's tracing the mirror image onto the pad. So, so it's gonna look very backwards. And when she was tracing it, Brenda said something to the effect that it went against like every instinct because the music notes were backwards. <laughs> you have to really trust your original drawing because things don't click right in our brains when they're backwards. You know, we expect certain shapes or weights of, of lines to be in certain places. And, and so you have to really trust your original drawing and just trace what was there because it's going to look a little bit strange to you. So, we now like, have yeah. everything carved, at least as far as we think we want to carve it. And you can always take out more, you can't put it back. So, um, <laughs> it's best to sort of try it and see if you want to add something to it. Um, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to put what I want to print, um, roll the ink onto onto something else just to protect. I'm going to put a little bit of ink on here. This paper plate, very fancy equipment. Mm -hmm. I just rolled it, washed this off in case there's any dry ink on here. I want to make sure that's not any anything wet because I want the consistency to be, you know, what it is coming out of the, the tube. All right, so kind of spread it around. This is the moment of truth. I love this part. It also makes me very nervous, especially doing this on camera. Let's <laughs> see what it looks like. So I'll print it on here. Gonna roll it all over the whole thing. Trying to get it even. You don't want it to have it, again, too thick, too gloopy, because then it'll get into all the little areas that you just carved. So, all right, so I've got that on there. It should look something like that. This has a couple little stains from me rolling it. And I don't know what direction this goes, because I just made this up. I'm gonna put that there. Oh, I have ink on my fingers already. <laughs> I'm, I'm what you call a messy painter, messy crafts person. Roll it on. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like this! Yes! So, oh, beautiful. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of fun. All right, now I want to see what you all do. Oh, <laughs> so, I'll squirt a little bit more ink here for you. Great. Don't need a ton. Mm -hmm. And roll it, and as you're rolling it, Besides just going back and forth, make sure you go sort of forward a few times to get it all around the entire cylinder. Mm -hmm. I am going 
the car out a couple more places, I think. Ooh, isn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> it's so satisfying. All right. All right. Now you flip it upside down. Let's see what I would do. You want to do it on the same paper? Yeah, why not? We'll just go for the, uh, the, uh, the, what is it called? The weathered look? There you go. Oh, yeah, that's right. I use this. All righty. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hey. That's awesome. That's cool. Your first black bread. Yay. <laughs> Absolutely happened to me. And then I like six. sitting there a little. Good news is you can just make another print. So as long as it's not on fabric or something that you're trying to have a, be a permanent. Just do it again. Oh, that looks awesome. So you're going to hold that next to it. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to check out our website and Facebook page for all sorts of cool events and programs happening here at the Ward Museum. And be sure to also check out our other social media like our Instagram and TikTok pages. You can find us at Ward Museum for all sorts of really fun content. Hope to see you soon.